The late 80s were a real difficult time for some high profile rock musicians who had enjoyed success a decade or even several years prior. Rock and roll bad boy Ted Nugent's career seemed pretty quiet during this time. Some people even counted him out. But he wasn't the only one struggling at the time as former Styx frontman and guitarist Tommy Shaw would be embarking on a solo career having already released three records. Meanwhile, Night Rangers bassist Jack Blades was dealing with the breakup of his band. It would seem strange that three musicians who were having lulls in their careers would be an attractive prospect for one of the biggest A&R men in the record industry, but that's what happened. They would eventually form the group Damn Yankees. Despite being successful, Damn Yankees would be paid a million dollars to simply vanish. What happened? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Geffen Records A&R man John Kaladner, Calendar, Kaladner, I can never say that name right, seemed like an expert in reviving struggling musicians' careers. Up until this point, he helped Aerosmith and Whitesnake reinvent themselves, and he had the same plan for Tommy Shaw, Jack Blades, and Ted Nugent. Nugent would establish himself in the 1970s, but like so many musicians who were popular during that decade, by the 80s, musical tastes had changed, and newer sounds had taken over, as well as new bands. Tommy Shaw, meanwhile, would front the pop and adult-oriented group Styx, where he would frequently clash with Dennis DeYoung over the band's sound and direction. Jack Blades, meanwhile, would cut his teeth singing and playing bass and writing songs for the group Night Ranger, but the record label, according to him, destroyed a really good rock band, telling the LA Times in 1991. Sister Christian, Night Ranger's big 1984 hit was a ballad, and from that point on, our record company only allowed us to release more ballads, and that really destroyed a good rock and roll band. Damn Yankees would be born in 1988, when Shaw and Nugent were sitting together at a music show business dinner. It was following the meal that Shaw would tell Nugent that when they were done promoting their respective records, they should get together and start writing material. But Nugent initially thought the idea was ridiculous. It was not too long after this, Shaw and his manager called up Kaladner, asking for Nugent's number. After some convincing, Nugent agreed to give it a try, and by the early days of 1988, the pair would jam together on acoustic guitars and had come up with a song called Come Again, which ended up on Damn Yankee's debut record. At the time, the band had a stand-in on bass, and while Nugent and Shaw felt that they had chemistry, Kaladner felt that something was missing. That missing element would be Jack Blades from Night Ranger. Blades would recall what happened next, saying, So I flew to New York three days after Night Ranger broke up, and the next thing I know, the damn Yankees were happening. It was by 1989 the trio, along with Tommy Shaw's drummer Michael Cardellone, would start writing songs and rehearsing. They would come up with several more tracks, including High Enough and Coming of Age. Now, Damn Yankees weren't the only super group in the 80s, as it kind of became a trend for a little while, as you had groups like Badlands, Mr. Big, and Bad English also being popular during this time. The band would end up signing a deal with Warner Brothers, and Damn Yankees would head into the studio in late 1989 with producer Ron Nevison. Released in 1990, their self-titled debut record would go multi-platinum, and produced several hits. The band would spend a whopping 18 months on the road and they would be playing alongside groups including Bad Company, Poison, and Jackal. The group's tour would also coincide with the first Persian Gulf War, with the band frequently speaking and making patriotic statements on stage and incorporating the American flag into their shows. Even the band's backstage passes gave a nod to the American military, as you can see here. The band's name would even inspire some US troops who served in the Gulf War, with the US Marines naming one of their 155mm howitzer guns, Damn Yankees. The band would return in 1992 with their follow-up record, Don't Tread, and Shaw would tell reporter Gary Graft, It felt a little different writing songs together this time than we did before. We knew what Damn Yankees was. Ted Nugent would look back at the difference between the band's first two albums, telling the American music press, I think the first album was a fantastic album. My only real complaint about it is the overall mix. I thought it was mixed real blandly. I don't think the guitars had any twang to them. I thought it was done real disrespectful to our R&B pulse. The album would end up being certified gold, selling about half a million copies, but it underperformed selling a fraction of their debut record. The album would, however, get a boost at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, 
when Team USA used one of the band's tracks as their theme song. Damn Yankees would put out what would be their final piece of work, the power ballad The Silence Is Broken, for the 1993 action film Nowhere to Run, starring 90s action star Jean-Claude Van Damme. Talk about a blast from the past. Who else loved Jean-Claude Van Damme movies in the 90s? It was shortly after this that Blades and Shaw did a lot of outside work, working with Cher, Alice Cooper, Aerosmith, and Ozzy Osbourne. Blades would reveal in an interview with 80s Metal Recycle Bin, it was a good creative period, so it was really fun time. Actually, then our record label Warner Brothers said, why don't you guys go do a record? So we did the first Shaw Blades record, 1995's Hallucination. Their label though seemed to drop the ball and they really didn't do much to promote the album. And soon enough, the label's attitude had shifted, with Blades adding, Right when the album was released, that's when all the guys at the record company decided they needed to shave their heads and be cool and all that kind of stuff. That was the real turning point, like 95 actually. That was the crazy time. The new regime came in and they didn't want to do anything with that style of music. And in fact, they paid Damn Yankees a million dollars not to do another Damn Yankees record. He would go on to reveal that the reason the band was paid a million dollars to simply go away and disappear was because the band had already recouped their advance and they had sold so many records that for the label, it made more sense to just pay them a million dollars and not have to deal with another Damn Yankees record that may not sell as well as their first album. The supergroup would, however, reunite in 1998 and 2010, and in 1999, John Kaladner attempted to reunite the band for what would be their third album for his label, Portrait Records, but Shaw had gotten back with Sticks, and that prevented the band from doing a third album. Kaladner would tell Melodic Rock about the failed record, saying, I didn't think it was quite good enough, and at the time, with the 80s style rock, you'd have to come up with something pretty spectacular. I was disappointed in the record, mostly because of Tommy Shaw's non-participation. Shaw would be interviewed by Eddie I Know Everybody in That Band Trunk in 2020, and was asked about a possible reunion, saying, well, we never broke up. We're all still best of friends, so who knows? It's hard because with Sticks, we work so much, and to do that, referring to a damn Yankees reunion, it would mean putting the members of Sticks out of work for a while, so it's a tough one but every once in a while we wind up on the same stage. In a 2014 interview, Nugent would maintain that the band members were still friends, but hunting is a bigger priority in his life, and that it makes it difficult to make any kind of commitment to a damn Yankees reunion. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.